Episode 36. Celebrating. Celebrating 100,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. Shout out to Nicole, Duncan, John, everybody who's worked on the show. We appreciate you. We love wow. you. You've done an outstanding job. Did you hear what I said? 100,000 subs. It's a big number. It's a big number. It's an excellent number. How many subs do you have on YouTube? We have like 2,000. I don't even want to hear from you. What about you? <laughs> you have a YouTube channel? No. What's YouTube? Okay, good. All, all the kids, is that, the, is that like TikTok, but like for adults? Come on. Listen, we have a big show. We have a big show today, and we can't dawdle because there's way too much to talk about. We have two fan favorites on the show today. Fan for the favorites. first time, have you guys ever done a podcast together? JC and I have not. What? We've done We've done TV together. At we've some done, point, we've yeah. done speaking events together. I can't wait to see who dominates. No, I'm just kidding. It's a lot uh, of horsepower <laughs> on that side of the table. A lot, a lot of horsepower, horsepower today. All right, JC Perez. A lot of opinions. You know him. <laughs> you love him. We're going to try to draw him out of his shell a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to try to get him to say what he really thinks. And Dan Nathan, the lovable Dan Nathan, is back. And uh, t- tonight's show, we're going to start with JC's charts, as we always do. Is this your third time on uh, The Compound and Friends? I believe so. All right. So the third time's a charm. We used to do something, like like we monthlies did. with Josh and JC or <laughs> something. We really did. We All right. did. The that Untitled was Chart Show. Let's get right, in. Let's get right into what these. What was it called? The Untitled Chart, chart show. show. That was, was dope. It was not bad. It was a good dress rehearsal for this. Uh, the first thing we have to do is commodities. That is the biggest story uh, market-wise. Over the, gonna... We'll get there later. Right. That is the biggest story market-wise. Let's throw up JC's first chart. This is the CRB index. Uh, well, it looks like a sombrero. What are you trying to tell me here? I mean, it's going up, right? So, But I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> the most bullish thing an asset can do is go up in price. Okay. I mean, that's just not my opinion. That's just a fact, right? What are the so... we- What's the weights of this index? So it's a lot of energy. Like which 60 is, or more? You wait, my friend. You wait. Give me a second. <laughs> Give me a second. So the bottom line is, is how I, people forget that commodities have had cycles where they go up before, right? Because a lot of investors, you know, a lot of new investors over the last years. decade. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah fine. Yeah. So a lot of people just haven't, haven't participated in an environment where these things are relevant. It's like oil and gas. Give me tech. Give me software. You know, Robin Hood. Yeah. Oil as a service. Wheat is the new <laughs> arc. <laughs> We'll get to wheat, uh, but commodities in general have really been going up. It's not just like one or two. They've really, everything but gold, right? Everything but gold and silver, base metals, agriculture, energy, heating oil, crude oil, Brent, all of them have been working and you're seeing that here. But again, think as, as, as far as we've come, when you zoom out, we can go a lot higher and it's really perfectly normal. Or can we have a break? Can we have corrections? I can virtually guarantee you that we will. I don't know, but my bet is we probably will have corrections along the way. Um, but I What's think What's the significance of this gray line though? That's been a pivot point historically. Yeah, you know, former resistance in the late 90s, early 2000s that turned into support after the great financial crisis. I mean, it's quite obvious there's a lot of market memory there and if we're above that 200 level in the CRB index which we've talked about on the show, we used to talk about it in the un Untitled chart show, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, the trend is up. So you can fight this if you want, but I think that would probably be foolish. We kind of have to throw out that bullshit that went on at the beginning of 2020 because it was mechanical. Like it was not. An, it was, you mean in crude oil, the, the, crude the negative being, prints? Crude being negative. Next not, chart, John. All right. Here we are. To your point, Mr. Brown, uh, crude oil trades below zero in April of uh, 2020. Wait, and for the audience, for the audience, what are we looking at? We are looking at a ratio of the S&P 500 and the CRB index. So stocks versus commodities, essentially. I went vertical. So just, um, you know, straight up stocks been outperforming commodities for a decade. And then the reason I bring this chart up, obviously, we're making new multi-year lows in the S&P 500 relative to commodities. But How the, clean that support line is on the way up. Too. Brother, the, the bottom line is these things these things last a decade. These trends are, this isn't like a day trade or like a swing trade. Like these are real secular this is like a new, this, you're saying this is like the start of regime. a new regime. regime. I love Super using that duper word. cycle. What do you Super th- duper. What do you think? Too 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 early to say we're in a commodity bull market? Yeah. I mean, uh, again, I mean, I, I can't disagree with his charts. The charts are the charts. Um, you know, The charts but, don't lie. Well, going back to the Thank first you. one well, with, with, with just the CRB, <laughs> what I take away from that is when you do have those parabolic mo- moves, there usually is an inflection point. There's something going on other than, you know, you know what I mean? And so right now we had a trade war. We had deep globalization. We had a black swan pandemic that just destroyed all – it's destroyed demand, but then it also destroyed supply chains. And, and, and it's been waves of when it's – you know, we were supposed to be 
endemic in 2021, and we got Delta in Q3, and we got Omicron in Q4. And so, you know, now we have this war in uh, Ukraine, and who knows what's going to happen with China and Taiwan. So my point is, is like, you know, we have, we've gone parab parabolic. I suspect that you're going to see a huge retracement. I mean, that's just my tech, and that's purely qualitatively there, because if you look at that 25-year chart, every single time it's gone parabolic, it's retraced, like, what, 50% of the move over the next few years or so? Yeah, listen, go, I mean, this is on a relative basis, so you yeah. can tell that it's much cleaner. So while you do have retracements on an absolute basis, the secular trend, and this isn't like, hey, go long S&P and short, or short commodities or vice versa. It's, hey, the trend bigger picture is commodities going up. So if you're going to be buying stocks, perhaps you should take a closer look at the types of stocks that have exposure to those so areas. Is that, is that next? Well, I wanted to go, go to the next one. Uh, so you can really see. So you asked me about the uh, exposure that CRB index has. So yeah, it's a lot of energy. So let's extract that out there and take all 33 commodities futures, which is what we do uh, here. This is the chart. And we equally weight it. So this yeah. is an mm. equally weighted uh, commodities chart. And as you can see, it's only 15% energy. You got a lot more industrial metals, uh, grains, softs, livestocks, everything's what been ripping. Softs? What are softs? Softs like cocoa. Soy soybeans, coffee. Cocoa. Those are, I, I didn't know that either. Yeah, um, really? you know, livestock. I feel like you would be the kind of person. Go to, go to the next chart, but this is to show you that it's not just the CRB index. And then the bond market, as usual, is right. You know, I, I don't trust people, really. I trust dogs and the bond market. <laughs> And the bond market's been telling us that inflationary pressures have existed. Uh, this is I, I saw this in your email yesterday. This what is, are we looking at? This is inflation-protected treasury securities. So it's tips versus U.S. treasuries. Right. And tips relative to the same maturity um, treasuries have just uh, substantially broken out of a downtrend, yeah. which is just another way to confirm that the bond market is pricing in more inflation. And the commodities are obviously doing that by going up, and you're just seeing that again and again. Uh, but this is the bond market telling you that. So it's not like an Oh, my opinion. God. It's like, not just the commodity thing. players. I just bought up a chart of wheat, yeah. like literally. Like the ETF that tracks it yeah. is up 16%. Techrium. Holy shit. Yeah, I, yep. got a, I got a ratio chart of wheat to Peloton. You would be absolutely blown Yeah, but are, aren't you guys concerned going that to the all, upper right. all yeah. of these charts, all of this price action, wheat's been limited up, it's literally pricing in Armageddon so, yes. here. I mean, yeah, that's I the thing. It's a lot very fast. Yeah. But, if uh, but retraces, you both be right. You both be right. Like this, the longer term trend might be up, even if we'd like overshot, in, like in the in the near term. Why is it though that pre pandemic, um, everyone used to say that the Fed was trying to solve to north of two percent inflation, right? And 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 a lot of smart people said, be careful what you wish for, right? Because we do see inflation in a lot of places in healthcare and education and a whole host of other things, right? But technology has been this massive deflationary force. Um, globalization on wages. I mean, the list goes on and on. And the conversation was. UBI, universal basic income, and you know technology is destroying everything. So I just don't believe. I mean, granted, this is like the black swan of all black swans. The pandemic; it doesn't seem like it's ever going to end. I just don't think it's broken the cycles that we had seen, like really decomposing before our eyes since the industrial age over the last, let's say, hundred plus years or something like that. I just don't believe the pandemic is going to do that. Hopefully, it will end soon, and hopefully, we don't have World War Three. Well, one other thing to throw on on top of that is, like the cure for very high commodity prices is very high commodity prices because people are greedy and eventually they'll overproduce whatever is very expensive, and which I, and is I, a regulating force. And, I, and I'll tell you this, from a reality standpoint in terms of money flow and asset allocation, investors are just not in commodities. Right. So the biggest risk to yes. investors, you know, in 2021, the best performing sector was energy. So far this year, by a long shot, obviously. The best performing asset class last year was also commodities. And investors have a lot of exposure in growth and tech and all of the areas that have been getting slaughtered. And those are the areas that were underperforming 2004, five, six, seven, yes. right? So this is very similar to that. Technology can go up, uh, but like it, it was an afterthought back then, I think it will continue to be an afterthought moving forward. And I'll show you now if you'd like. Yes, let's go. <laughs> So here's the U.S. 10-year yield, which is really one of the things that have been driving this. So you asked me about uh, the U.S. 10s. 2%, I thought was a lock. You know, there's some memory there. I think 3%'s a lock. I think that's where we're really? going. If we, yeah, for sure. Um, so 3%, this, this I week think, is a war-related head fake. Like the pullback from 2% to 1.7%. He just said faux show. Do you let you guys let people get away with for I mean, sure? I we're going to go for I, well, one eight my, one. The nomenclature, the nomenclature was uh, a lock. 
<laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> JC's sure. lock of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Talking about, bro. Today's Call program it, sponsored by FanDuel. Yeah, exactly. All right, go ahead. No, listen, I think if U.S. 10-year yields above 2%, I think that's the bet you need to make. I mean, I think if we're below 2%, then you could be like, okay, it's digesting for a while. But if we're above 2, I think 3 is next. All right, when's 3, and where is the S&P 500 if the 10 years at 3? Well, mm. fortunately, we don't have to care what the S&P 500 is doing. We can bet on specific sectors, and I think energy is going higher. Yeah. I think materials are higher. I think cyclicals are what higher. What about the XLF? I think tech and growth in general continue to underperform. No. What what do financials do in that scenario? Is it the, the, the speed at which it gets to 3%? That might determine whether or not. Yeah, I think regionals probably benefit the most. Community banks, like your obvious areas, insurance has been a huge winner, right? Wait, if you had to guess, struggled. time frame for a three percent. I know you. Nobody knows, but Bro, like, is I that twelve? No, it's that, but is that six months or twelve months or twenty-four? Yeah, probably this year. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Yeah, maybe next year. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm very confident sure. in my assertion. Um, I think. You, I think for the stock market, the stock. It's not so much whether it gets to three; it's how fast it gets there, because the stock market doesn't like rates moving fast so if it goes to three and it takes a year and a half or two years i think stock market yeah. in general is fine That's you say point. that no well you say it's a key point but the 10-year u.s treasury yield went from one percent to two percent in a very short period of time last year and the stock market didn't give a shit agreed right. think right. about that yeah I'm no, just, you know sure. what i mean so but i think two to three is different and i agreed. and then when i think about you know if you took that 10-year treasury yield chart and you back it out 30 years okay you take it back to 1990 it's upper left yep. to the bottom right and no one ever thought the 10-year u.s treasury yield would essentially go to zero which yep. is what it did when it was at 50 basis points in 2020 and then it shot to two percent the two percent was a, a lot of people's target i'm not saying you're you know what i mean like you weren't particularly unique but t interestingly to me is that what's happened in each of the last two major market tops where the s p 500 has been cut in half and that's why i asked you where do you think the s p is because the fed was hiking into the top of the market in early 2000, okay? And they did the same thing into 2007, okay? And then they were doing the same thing into 2018, okay? The first two times the S&P got cut in half. Okay, well, they're, late 50%. To, they're, late, they're late to cut and they're late to hike. It's the same. It's over right. and over but again. But what's different this time about what they might or might not do, the rate move was really interesting to me last week. As soon as that you saw that CME Fed funds tracker move from a, a high yeah. probability of a 50 basis point hike, okay, in March to basically a zero probability, what happened? Okay, you saw rates get nailed. And that was a huge move. So I, I guess my point is about the rate thing is that I don't think rates are ever going up meaningfully ever again. Maybe they get to 3% someday in some weirdo world. Look at what happened to the Fed's balance sheet that they're never going to let run off. That's what's different. Every crisis that we've seen over the last 20 years, the Fed balance sheet keeps skipping up a few small, trillion dollars. It doesn't go back to yeah. uh, Tony, Dwy Tony Dwyer had that. I also think that investor demand for interest rates will not y let yields go well, much yeah, more. Yeah, we've been, say we're we've been saying about, that on this show. Yeah. It's like, if I could get 3% risk-free in a treasury... There's like 20% of my stocks There's that I have no interest dollars. in anymore. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right. yeah. No, yeah. But what people are not thinking about is that if oil's at 250 and gold's at 10,000, the U.S. 10-year yield ain't going to be at 2%. Yeah, but w which one so, drives which? Uh, it doesn't matter. The, My, the point is, and I'm not saying oil's going to 250 or gold's going to 10,000, but as investors, if we're not thinking that that's on the table, I think you are making a huge mistake. And this isn't a day trade or a swing trade. I think this is the way we need to think as investors. That's a real possibility. Wilder, more outrageous price swings than before, you're saying? I mean, we've seen 150. Why can't we see two? Wait, hold on. Oh, zero, too. It's right. amazing. 3%, it's really amazing. 3% exactly. is obviously a possibility. Of course it's in the yeah, table. Yeah, nobody would say that's right. not. No, my thinking is that the demand for fixed income at those yields will, will swamp the ability for rates to go meaningfully higher. And obviously, I can you know, there's uh, 17 trillion dollars in cash right now in American consumers, like bank accounts, money, market funds. What? Why are they yield farming? Set, no, but think about that number. They're not yield farming so so you're telling, like, yeah, the Fed's balance sheet's nine trillion, blah blah blah. U.S. households alone have like almost 20 trillion dollars, and most of that's not going to end up in stocks. If the 10 year goes to three percent, I might buy bonds. It's it's not about what a household whether they're going to buy bonds or not. It's it. I think it's bigger than that. No, I I'm think, saying it I is. That, no, I'm, I'm saying, saying higher yields on risk free assets bring a ton of demand yeah, that's, that's in, what we're which depresses. Yeah, fine, yeah. maybe, but I think it's bigger than that. Is my point. I think there are inflationary factors that are going to be driving rates. Whether I agree that's that good too. for bond investors or not is not really. No, the to me, point, that's I like think. the biggest question. It's like with the push pull of that. Yeah, yeah. you're right. John, yeah. next slide. Let's do it, baby. Chevron. Um, 
So, you this know, rates, great, rates have really been driving this rotation, right? So obviously, or maybe not obvious to you, but <laughs> we've been talking about it here on the show. And, you know, we, we make it, I mean, the, the 10 year yields driving that rotation. When rates are going higher, certain stocks tend to do well, other stocks tend to do poorly. And guess what? The stocks that tend to do well when rates are going higher have been doing the best. And the stocks that tend to do poorly when rates are going higher are doing the worst. Jesse, for the set, listener, for the listener, what let me set this at? up. It's US 10 year yields versus a ratio of small cap value versus small cap growth. And surprise, surprise, they line up almost perfectly. Yeah. Um, I think I think there's I think a lot small of small cap value rallying hard with the ten year yield. A lot of charts like uh, relative this relative to growth, so growth underperforming. Growth. A lot of charts like this are chart crimes. This is not a chart crime. No, it's got both. Why scales. would it be a chart no, crime? Saying, oftentimes, when you see like funky shit like this, it is a chart crime. I'm saying you're guilty. Like, we have you're a innocent. guest here. You're he's innocent. Being accused of crime. I'm saying he's crimes, innocent. Bro, crimes. I'm Believe saying he's shit? innocent. Wait, wait, hold on a second. So, Dun Duncan, Duncan are, you are you still are you still bleeping their their? Yeah. yeah, and Ugh. yours. What's the, what's the maximum? And yours. Box? And yours. Ugh. I mean, no, this is why? Why? Already, why? So you guys so are so right, hip hop. I, I don't get it's it. It's not just small cap. This is saved so much time. No, it's because the the algorithms, the algorithms. Well, that's why you're at a hundred thousand YouTube, and, and I'm at two thousand. You have to bleep the f bombs for the algorithms. The algorithms. All right, whatever. Anyway, what are we looking do, at? Do you want other people to watch your shit and hear it, or you don't? Okay. If you don't, then by all means, don't bleep. Do you not? What are we looking at? <laughs> Same thing on the large cap scale, right? So it's not just small caps, large caps too, okay. right? But small caps sniffed it out earlier. The large cap growth sort of had some outperformance into year end, and that completely fell apart when we entered the new year. And it's small cap and large cap growth underperforming with rates going higher, which is perfectly normal I think by one of the, all historical measures. One of the reasons why you see such a discrepancy between small small value, small growth, large value, large growth is because small value, a huge portion of that are regional banks, and they're particularly sensitive to higher rates in a good way. Yeah. I was also going to say, like, we're doing value versus growth, but really this is a battle of what industries investors want their money in, more so than, because it's not like there's a sector where you could have the growth names selling off and the value names doing so well. They might just go down less. You know what comes to mind? We all consider semiconductors a growth sector. Right, good example. If if Nvidia Intel. and AMD are getting killed, Intel's not doubling. Intel's just going down less. Yeah. So this really is more about sector dispersion than it is about style. Although it's almost the same thing. Like I bet if you made a chart of like cyclical industries versus secular growth, you know, kind of industries, it would look almost identical. What do you think about that? He wasn't listening. That's, yes. That's I right. lost you. Yes. I lost you. Yeah, I mean, you make a good point on the semiconductors. When you look at internet, when you look at all those other growth areas, yeah. a software, cloud computing, they're all going down and semis are going sideways. What happened to snow today? Go ahead. Down 17%. Down as usual is what it does. It still so trades at 28 times. I think this is a trade of the generation. Sales. Snow has become slush. Uh, what's this? I think this is the that's trade good. of a generation. That's pretty good, right? I should be on fast money with lines like that. Oh. Yeah, but if 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 three percent tenure and you're not going to be interested in half the stocks, it's going to be like the most boring show ever. What are we going to do? Talk about like real di yield differentials? CDs, Kroger. Be amazing. This is a good. This is a chart. Oh, en I'll energy versus tech. I would fade this eventually. Well, I think if we're above the March 2000 lows. You could fade it all you want, but it's going higher. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Would you actually put that trade on a we, short tech low we have energy? It on. You have it on. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Indirectly because we've got on we've got on Chevron leaps, twenty twenty four January leaps, one fifty strikes. What does that look like year to date? Um like the discrepancy between energy and tech. It must be massive. Oh you. my god. I think it's it's one of the biggest I mean, go back in history and pick two sectors and look at the dispersion and tell me. <laughs> I think the XLE is up 35% yeah. year to date and uh, NASDAQ's down what? 14, yeah, so, 15% so, so or something. 32 yeah. and minus 10. It's a lot. Holy you know when you want to fade this? When people start asking you for oil stock ideas. Yeah. You know when you that, we're not fade there this? yet. When we get back to the 2008 highs, that's when you can fade Stop. it. Stop. 2008 highs on the energy sector? That, Relative to tech. If that happens, Relative. the market's crashing. Okay, maybe. All right, what do we got next? Oil and gas exploration and production I mean, you can, you ETF. Can flip, you can flip through wow. these, uh, you know, break it out of a this beautiful looks, base. This looks amazing. What are the big components in, in this? Do you know? Occidental. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Go, go, go down that Conical, list. Is Conical, no, that's. Go, it's, so the oil services are like Halliburton, Schlumberger. That's so it's not those. In this case, you're looking at the XOP. Go look, the, the, the market you. caps are all kind of the same. So the top 10 changes Occidental, a lot. It's Occidental, Apache, Marathon, and Adarko used to be in here. That was bought. These are, like Devon. these are like shale companies and the top 10 changes a lot midstream 
So I know that you do this a lot, and I've followed JC's work for over 10 years, I think, okay? And you always say there's lots of stuff to trade. You know, I mean, you, you, this is part of your thematic sort of stuff. It's interesting to me. I've been in the markets for 25 years, and because energy was such a greater part of the S&P 500, let's in say, like when 05, I started, 06, versus, I think it's like was low single digits last year, yeah. okay, before this this move. You know, it was always a really niche group of investors who were interested in it, and they were, almost, they were like the gold bugs in a way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I, I could give two shits about gold. Most I, of them were, about most of them were Canadian. Yes. No, but the resource, yeah. like the, the, they come from Australia and Canada. And then there's like a handful of guys here in the U S who gave a shit South about Africa. It. Yeah. It, but, but I, I, so to me, it's really funny. And like, literally, again, I've been doing this for a long time as an investor, a trader, and then as a pundit for the last, call it 12 or 13 years. And sometimes my eyes do glaze over on something. I cannot find myself getting interested in some of this stuff. You know, the last, the last energy company to actually be interesting was Chesapeake. Yeah. Because Aubrey McClendon was just like, he was like a tech founder. Yeah. Like his vision. Of, he was the guy who drove himself into yeah, a wall. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't end well. But his, yeah. but in his heyday, when he was on Mad Money every week yeah. and he was like making huge acquisitions. They bought the Thunder Arena. He, right. He, he was oh, always yeah. sitting courtside. He was doing yeah. crazy shit. And yeah. he was like fascinating. I can't think of another like natural gas company yeah. executive, True. maybe uh, T Boone Pickens. T Boone, and, come on. <laughs> and I, who else? That's I mean I think personalities are not interesting in this space. You know which, nobody's interested. Nobody has any exposure to it. S smells like a Dick squeeze. Dick Cheney was who, great. Who's buying Alcoa? Who's excited about Alcoa? We, stocks ripping. Us. Yeah, you are. Stocks <laughs> ripping. All right, Chevron. This thing went vertical this week. So this, go, is, this is the, one going. of the sickest charts I've ever and I seen. I just wanted to show the oil and gas longer term. So that's the EMP. If we're above those, see that those O9 lows. And then you had the low, same lows in 2016. If we're above those levels and you're not long energy, like I don't know is what that, you're Is that irresponsible or irresponsible? I think it's incredibly irresponsible <laughs> to you, your family, and everybody you know. Get them. All right, what's next? Chevron. There it is, Chevron. We got the 150. Still, all right, is this like, can you reasonably still buy this? It doesn't look like it's done that it's, much. It's funny you said that. Over time. When it was in the one low 130s, we were asking ourselves that, like, are we chasing? Are we chasing? It's like, well, if we buy the January 2024 leaps, we could give it room to dance, and it gives us exposure, right? What so does that cost? It cost 12 bucks at the time. Now it's twice that. So we, mm. we sell half when our calls double. We just did that this week, and now we have a free ride for the next two years long Chevron. I mean, if that's not the perfect situation, because now we're playing with house money. We What's, can hold this thing for two more years. Is there anything else setting up similar to Chevron that you think – Okay. Funny right. you should ask. Funny I should. I, I, didn't, I didn't do that on purpose. So the economists in their infinite wisdom comes out with making coal history, which is hilarious at the same time that Vanek um, uh, delists the coal ETF, KOL. I remember all this. This um, is October 2020. Yeah. So the cover of the economist making coal history, and that's literally the bottom on Peabody Energy. And they delisted the coal ETF. Hold on. This stock time. just went from 50 cents to $21. After they delisted Are you the kidding ETF, me? I am not. Can't make this shit up. That's incredible. By K the way, K O L yeah. was the coal yeah. ETF. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That's yeah. In, that's incredible. Is it beautiful? So you you could buy this now. Uh, if I don't you, think I, it's ESG, JC. Um, <laughs> for all my friends in the ESG, wait, PQ, to, whatever to community, KOL, there was like three stocks in the industry. Like, yeah, because they all went out of business. They were in other countries and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to buy that one. Yeah, but. we're so for the ESG people, we're buying the <laughs> the grossest, dirtiest companies in the world that hurt the earth the worst. Those are the ones we're buying. Is this is this a cup and handle? I'm not like a cup and handle I know you're guy. Not a pattern guy. Um, but for me, these look the same, right? Go back and look at the chart, right? They look the same. So you're looking at that tip e e EIF uh, this IEF is, this ratio. Is, this is beautiful, Jason. So that's that same chart we looked at before, and the yeah. correlation between. That's a dope chart. Is this a dope chart? That's really Do is. I bring yeah, dope be charts or what? Come on. So wait, let's explain what we're looking at. This is beautiful. <laughs> So the metals and mining ETF in black, and then below you're looking at tips versus treasuries. So it's what the bond market's pricing so in for inflation. So it's showing metals and mining moving in line with inflation and inflation expectations. Exactly. This, this, right? is a, this is a beautiful chart. Well done. And then for you correlation nerds, you got that down at the bottom. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty clean. You know. All right. So next here's chart. Free, here's Freeport. Here's and then here's the trade. Yeah, so Freeport, 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 Newcore, Reliance. It's amazing how they all look the same, but it shouldn't be. Is amazing. it amazing? It shouldn't be. It's all something. <laughs> they all do the same thing. It makes it makes perfect sense that yeah. they would all. So the trade's very simple. If we're above last year's highs, you own it. If we're not above last year's highs, you don't. No, you make a recommendation. If you're interested in listening to the fundamental case for these companies, Eric something was on Patrick O'Shaughnessy's podcast this week. I don't know the guy's last name, but it was just hilarious to hear how smart this guy was. Like, just if you're cash trading stocks that's your competition and he's talking about Alcoa bullish as hell and all these names you, uh, listen to you know that. who else I think 
Did Patrick have Jeff Curry on? The Goldman Sachs come out of these guys? I think I missed Somebody that one. had him on. He was. I, I will now because we're talking so about uh, Patrick Oshag Hennessy here. Um, the, one of the <laughs> best Hennessey. podcasts that I listened to in the last years was when he had Gavin Baker. Oh on my god, from that awesome. Did you hear that? Yes, that, that yes. in January. This one yeah. or the last one. This, this one. one is so good. I, I mean, I was mesmerized by it. Yeah. It, it was, so this was uh, this guy's name is Eric Mandelblatt. Do you know who that is? Jewish. Er Mendelbaum. Mendelbaum. Eric Remember Mandelblatt that? from Sorbonne no Capital. Is so Jewish. good. I think so. <laughs> All right. Steel Dynamics, STLD. Yeah. What are we doing here? We getting long? You buy it. For Dude, above if last you year's highs, you own it. If you don't buy this, your wife will leave you. I mean, you don't. I don't know about all that, but I have think fun above, staying poor yeah. if you're not in steel dynamics. Uh, maybe, but I think it's above seventy five. <laughs> Is that you're your long. final you trade know? on the half today? That's how I introduce my final trade Next every one, John. night. <laughs> Wait, do we have any growth stocks? What the fuck is this? Next chart. I want to look at this. South African gold. Get out. Next. Next. Come on. Next. South African you buy. gold. Next. This is so Next. Next. Hold on. Stop. This is Sociedad Química y Minera de Chile. <laughs> It's a $17 billion <laughs> lithium producer. I think you own it. Look at that base. Wait, Come on. SQM. Uh, I was in ALB, which is the same trade. Albemarle. That was a good Al one, too. Albemarle. Still uh, is. Same trade, but Albemarle is based in North Carolina. And this is based. Uh, we have any growth in, stocks? Uh, so now you're getting Latin of, America exposure, Chilean country. exposure. You're getting out of the U.S., the worst country in the Western Hemisphere. Watch your mouth. Watch Stock your mouth. market wise, I but love this America. Is, this oh. is lithium. It's it's a weird metal. It's the lightest Get metal. Get you out of America. I, I thought he was doing his Latin Jeff America. Daniels thing from that. Remember the network? Remember that opening scene? The no. show on HBO. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where yeah. I think he was going. What was but the name of that show? The network. No. It's a newsroom. That's a good newsroom. Uh, we have any growth stocks that, that are crashing coming up? Show yes. me Nasdaq. That's what we're coming. Right, there we go. Here we now go. We're now going. we're coming. That's, that's like a generational top, Doug. Like, Doug's quote, Doug Cass. No, Isn't that what not. it looks like? That rounded. Who? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that rounded top where people slowly just give up and every high is a lower high. Doesn't that look really f***ing bad right now? Yeah, it's going to be a minute. Nasdaq composite. It's going to be a minute. Um, that's this doesn't just stop I mean, on a diamond reverse. Seventy percent of the Nasdaq is down twenty percent. Half the Nasdaq stocks have been cut in half. The average drawdown on the Nasdaq is forty four percent. And people are asking me if I think that we're going to go into a bear market. It's like, well, what the hell do you call that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what but, are you talking yeah. about, bro? But th this doesn't just stop on a dime and turn around. Because so too many people need it to. Let me Maybe tell you, will. the biggest fake out, um, one of the worst trades I've had on in ten years, and I mean this sincerely, is kind of my scar tissue from the financial crisis, which actually just kind of got worse from the post.com implosion in 15 and 16. Remember we had that Chinese growth scare in 15? We, and the really earliest recession. Yeah, but we had, we, we had the first, we, it looked like that. I yes. just want to, I just want to be really clear. And I was certain, I was <laughs> certain that was a generational top. And I leaned into a lot of that stuff and I got my you face see that. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, yeah, the you know, generational top is in the tech energy ratio. So, so not, not so much not tech on an absolute. absolute. The inverse of what we were just looking at. We were just at, yeah. Right, correct. So yeah. we're essentially long energy short the NASDAQ. We're just essentially long energy on a relative basis because um, technology is such a, a huge portion, not short the NASDAQ, short tech. But tech is such a, a large portion of the market. You're essentially playing the relative strength in energy. That, I think, is a generational trade. The top last year in the market, I think we'll blow right through that eventually. No problem. Uh, so now going. let's look at some stocks. Let's keep going. So this is the round trip, right? So these are all the infamous ones. This is uh, nuts. IPO. Uh, I can't stop looking at these charts. Look, look at iBuy. Wait, let me, set, let me set this up for the, the listener. So we have ARC, IPO, which is the Renaissance ETF for IPOs, XBI, which is Equal Weight Biotech, Crane Shares, China Internet, KWeb, everybody knows it. I don't know iBuy. What is that? Online that is retail? internet retail. Okay. Uh, you know everything so in it. Shopify, Shopify, Amazon. You know what's in it. All right. So... These stocks starting in April of 20, uh, March of 2020, it looks like the laggard went up 100%, but a few of them went up 300%, and they've all given it back, or almost all of it back. That's what we're saying here? Yeah, round trip. I mean, just these things it's have just- It's amazing how quickly this has faded. Yeah. You know, there was no staying power to most of these trades. Well, you had two years. Well. Well, that's, that's how the ball bounces. Peaked in February, you know. Yeah. For those uh, compound fans out there. For, for sure. But yeah, knowing Jim Carrey leaves the 7 Eleven dumb and dumber. Big ups, huh, guys? Yeah. Big, well, well, see you later. See you later. <laughs> That's what happened to these So stocks. let's take a look at a few of them. Okay. So here's the arc against those early 2020. Uh, you know, if, for you YOLOers out there looking to do some YOLOing, you know, these are the stocks that we're looking at for that sort of behavior. Um, but even with any good YOLO, you need a risk management strategy. Got it. And I think that if we are uh, against the January lows, to me, that's the YOLO strategy. For so ARC. 
for all the garbage. Arc, biotech. Wait, you mean you can get IPO. long? You can get long. Long, right. if we're above the January lows. You Funny that you mentioned 2015 mm-hmm. and you thought that there was the end of the world and generation and I was right there with you, bad. bro. I was, <laughs> was permeable. Bad. I thought Deutsche Bank was going to zero. I was right there with you. And then <laughs> January, we made a low. We undercut that low and retested in a lot of areas. The strongest areas did not retest in January and February of 2016. Very familiar sort of behavior. And, and here's another days. similarity. And then a certain person <laughs> made America great again not long after. All right, but but what, one of the things that was really similar in 15 was that the Fed had stopped uh, buying bonds and they were coming off SERP. I'm just saying, so that was, you can get yourself in a similar trap right now is what I'm saying. And the one thing I'd say about getting your bearish, arc, getting bearish, getting too bearish, right. okay. which everybody like is right it, now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. but what I'm saying is, medium, is like medium bearish by I, everyone. I mean, like polls, yeah. I'm fairly bearish. I mean, listen, if you're right about commodities, you better be bearish about stocks. I mean, I'm, just I'm saying, not. Well, 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 some of these stocks, so no. the one thing I would say about this arc <laughs> is that <laughs> well, I'm not putting words in your mouth. The one thing about ARK is that ARK is the NASDAQ without the good shit. So why buy the ARK ever again? You know what I mean? If you think about it, like you buy the QQQ because you have six stocks that make up half the weight, and then you have dozens of stocks that are down 50 and 60%. ARK is the NASDAQ, like, minus the good thing, all the I just gave you a title. The, all the it, companies yeah. with the dividends and, yeah. and the buybacks yeah. and yeah. Uh, exactly. earnings. Right. <laughs> with earnings. Well, I'm saying, Okay. Uh, but but you think it's a tradable bounce here, but you have to respect that. What is that, 60? Pick your favorite garbage stock, the SPC. I already have. The problem is I Robin picked them Hood. six months ago and well, held fine. them. fine. So I can't help you there. <laughs> I think the YOLO trade today and over the last week is you go long the worst things in the world if they're above the January lows. Because the if January they're January 2022 low. Correct. Last month. Let's do square. Oh, Show, two months. Yeah. Or we're calling this block now. Same thing, right? Janu- the, the January lows. If Failed break breakdown below 100. Yeah. Snap, snapping back right now. Yeah. Above the January lows. You're, it's all the same Speaking trade. Speaking of snap, snap has got the same chart almost. There's it's so got many. The weird, no, but because it had that huge gap the way square did. I'll just tell you, if square and snap fill in those gaps... Upstart was not not that I know what that, what company, that company does. Do? I, I know no what idea, Upstart does, but I do not. But what I'm saying is, if you some of those crazy gaps that we've seen over the last week, few weeks, you see those fill in, then that means that the markets below those those January 24th lows or below the lows last week, and then it's it you know couldn't SoFi fit in that bucket. So if I can fit it, you tell me because it, it's, I mean, been, it's, it's the worst of the worst. Right no, but now. it has, it has, but it doesn't have a chart. Basically, it's back. It hasn't at, been trading. It's that back long. at ten. It was a spack. You know what I'm saying? So that that's the hard part. I don't, is, I don't know quite what you're saying. I had to look at it. Twenty seven, twenty seven down, to, snap down to When 10. I see the stake, I'll be like, oh Dude, yeah. Snap has actually one of the weirdest charts because yeah, you remember he had chart. that. Look how weird this is. No, no, the snap chart. There's too many colors and lines. What is that? If you look at a sorry. All right, do what you got to do. Is, is it a no, daily chart? Is that dude, what we're looking yeah. Look at that candle look, on the Facebook yeah, it's day. so weird. That's the weirdest so thing weird. about it. This so might be the weirdest chart ever. Look, yeah. look at that. But we're above the January lows. So if you want to own it, own it above the January lows. I, I think that's the trade. DraftKings. Next chart. DraftKings. And then here's, this is the DraftKings. So uh, this guy, Harry Sloan, he's the uh, vice chairman. He's doing some YOLOing himself. Uh, just Big filed a form buy. for... So if you're looking for if you're looking for what the what, what smart yoloers are doing, this is what's going on here. So I think that's an interesting one. So go to the next one. DraftKings down ten percent. So then this is the whole hot list. So what we're doing is we're analyzing all the SEC filings, the 13 Ds, what the House of Reps are doing, uh, the senators are doing, and Wait, all the form fours. I'm surprised to see you looking at insider buying and selling at all. This seems so... He's a weight of the evidence guy. No, but doesn't this seem so distant from te- technical ana- a- this, you're analysis? You're analyzing the behavior analysis? of market and market participants. This is technical analysis. It is? We're watching money flow. But I've never heard you talk about insider buying. You and I have been talking about it for 20 years. No, but not as a... Per- all right, whatever, I'm not going to argue with you. This is great. That I think this is great that Wait, you're incorporating Nancy this. Wait, Nancy Pelosi's buying PayPal literally? What is Nancy Pelosi not buying? She just filed so like calls all kinds. I'll tell you of what, stuff. she's not buying DraftKings, motherfucker. <laughs> she's buying so, Apple. Uh, wait, 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 no, I'm not even no kidding. Why is, why is why are these people trading? Why is Nancy Pelosi trading all these stocks? I don't why know, is, bro, but she she must know something. You know, why would the Fed can we get her on the mortgage backed yeah. securities? Yeah. For their own portfolios. Dude, Tony Tuberville was YOLOing cattle futures and wheat futures and soybean. The, the, before the war, the senator of Alabama was buying all these commodities futures before the war. Look, we'll take a look at and it. And he's a dumb motherfucker.
motherfucker. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Bleep he made that. a lot of money. Go ahead. Bleep that, Duncan. <laughs> it's a wealthy motherfucker. Leave that in, Duncan. Leave that in, I Duncan. call the shots in this room. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on when you're on your podcast, yeah. you call the shots. Uh, all right. Tommy uh, Tommy the tuba or whatever. Tuberville. Uh, so, great. He was a head coach, college football coach, Auburn. Uh, At Mississippi State, I think. Maybe? Alliance Bernstein. Why is this on here? This doesn't look like anything's going on. Pelosi's yoloing. Uh, oh, she's alliance? buying this. Yeah, no, she's she saw uh, in the Jalen chart. Uh, unusual activity. Pelosi got on that. <laughs> Wait, when did you she's get a, a heat sinker over there at All Star Charts? Buying. She's a big Pete Najarian fan. So if you're looking to bottom fish some garbage, this you know, I'm not saying this is garbage. It's not like those tech stocks, but you know, definitely gotten hit. Coming back to a key level. If if you see what Nancy sees. And you want to be oh long, I think 42 uh, and a half. If you're above 42 and a half, join her. If not, it's her problem. Next trade, next Micron. Trade. <gasps> Same thing. She's buying Micron. Yeah. Look at that base, 20-year yeah, base. Looks, this actually looks, looks great. Oh, this one looks good. JC, do you have PayPal? Charter PayPal? What happened to PayPal? What in the f*** happened to PayPal? What do you mean, what, what happened? happened? If it's above the January they're lows, missed, you own they it. Missed, they missed. They, they guided they, lower for okay, the full year. Okay, one of the biggest stocks lost two-thirds of Dude, its value in like six months. Summer of 2021, they had a huge gap. They yeah. missed and guided down. And there was two consecutive gaps and no one was paying attention. It went from 310 in July to 95. Do you know that nobody is calling this guy out? Shulman, whatever the CEO is. They, they, were, they let it slip that they were thinking about buying Pinterest to gauge market response. That was the top for the stock. dollars or something like that. That was the top for the yep. stock. I don't know what the hell they're doing over there. What's This is Apache? This is Micron. I think oh, this, no. this is what I would do for the Micron. We already did this. We did Apache. So we're not, we didn't. We're going to do it now. But Pelosi, uh, she's already in. <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to put our crazy. alerts. We're going to put our alerts above the 2000 highs. And if it takes out the 2000 highs, we want to be buyers. We want to buy high, sell higher. What's the big deal? Josh yes. Brown here for PelosiTrades.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now go. Look at that. This is the one. This is Apache. And not only is Apache in the right sector, because it's not tech or growth or freaking biotech. Who's Young Chen Su? This is a gentleman on the board of directors uh, of Apache, and he just filed a form for. It's a hot rapper right now, <laughs> Young Chen Su. <laughs> Lil Chen Su. How much did he buy? 1.3 uh, million? million. It's not nothing. No, that looks legit, and the and the chart looks great. Like if a you're lot above of the, the two thousand highs, you buy. When are we gonna get the to Bitcoin? Uh, yeah, you got Bitcoin in here. Yeah, go. Let's skip ahead. What does, slide does is Bitcoin? Bitcoin. Here we are. Uh, so that's by the way, that's Tuberville. Oof. Corn futures, soybean futures, cattle futures. He's been loading the boat I th I before think the war. I think you fade those. Slide thirty-two, John. Slide thirty-two. Of thirty-two, Dan, oh, don't like Dan, this. calm down. So here's the thing. So, <laughs> so I don't know how many of your viewers are uh, are are trading options in the crypto markets. All of them. It would be irresponsible if they weren't. Yes. They're. Yes. Um, I think it would be pretty irresponsible if they were between you and me. But that's another story. Um, this has been a great market environment to be selling the wings. Is that how you guys talk? You selling yeah. wings? Yeah. Right. So taking advantage of the chop, right? And yeah. what's a wing? Premium. What's a wing? We're not what's options guys. What's what does that mean? Like, like really, kind of far away from the strike. Betting things keep get staying messy, yeah. right? So non-directional. That's been the trade, a great trade if you could put it on. So few people can. It's like it's like when you're on sports and when like you're teasing, you're like buying points for both teams. Mm, I think you're selling. But no, it's, I don't think it's anything like that. Okay. I think it's more like you're just betting that it stays messy. Okay. And then while traders are getting chopped up, they're making donations, you're, you're collecting yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that as as just crypto investors in general, we're not getting any of them making new highs, like 0, 0.0, it's right? Chop. Except for the gold one. There's a gold, uh, the t one at the top, the PAX gold. That's but biggest, that doesn't count, that's my right? Holding. So <laughs> Luna is by far and away the strongest yes, one. Yes. Not even close. That's in the Archery Index. Shout out to Archery. It is by far and away the, so what I think is- What, is, we want, Luna, what is Luna? Is it DeFi? Terra. Terra. Oh, that's, that's Terra's coin? It's an algorithmic stable coin. I don't know what they do. I'm a price guy. Mike, Michael does. He has all the white papers. Okay. All right. So let's 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 pivot. By the way, amazing job with the charts yeah, this, this time. Job. I mean, Were really. They dope this time? Dope. We got through like a clean. lot of really good stuff clean. here. Clean. Clean. Very clean. clean. He was and bored the whole time. He's like, commodities, bro. Come on. <laughs> No, I can't I, get excited I'm, about it. Can I tell you something? I was actually, actually trading your picks. I find those on as fuck. I like well thought out. <laughs> Um, ideas like that. I like your thematic. You have a top down view, then you you do the bottoms up, and I like the ratio ones. And and there's like some great ideas. All right, well, I appreciate uh, that, my friend. I that. We I don't know if this will turn out to look great in the short term, but we're maybe not giving retail enough credit. Uh, just generally speaking, I know I'm not. They seem to have really learned their lesson, and they don't panic anymore. And this is from Savita's group at Bank of America. 
Uh, big inflows from retail. This is the, the week of the war sell-off last, last week. Big inflows from retail during sell-off. Private clients, that's like mom and pop, have so far been buyers every week this year. And buying of this dip by retail was more aggressive than during other 10% pullbacks post-crisis. So mom and pop does not give a shit about uh, geopolitics as much as maybe we would have thought. And we have, let me see this. Like that's noticeable that they came charging in during a week where the market was probably as scary now, as some it's people. Been this some year. people might say that see that and say that's actually bearish because there's no fear yet. I wouldn't be one of those people, but some people might. Oh, because it's complacency. Right, exactly. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you think? What do you think about that? Well, I, I would say that you got to take retail and put it into two buckets, right? So there's a retail that was yoloing to uh, JC's point, and they were buying every spac, and you know before there was a target, they were buying every shit coin. They That's were buying tiny, tiny dollars. No, though. I understand, but it actually makes up. Like if you think about um, just from a sentiment standpoint, sentiment. I mean, you've absolutely Great. taken out a large group. You just you gave us that 17 trillion dollars of cash that's sitting on the sideline. To me, if it's not already in the stock market right now, what does that mean? That means that they're just, they got burned in dot com. They got burned in the housing crisis. You know what I mean? Maybe they got burned a little early in some of this other stuff. And maybe they're just not interested in investing it in risk assets. So I should or say home that like they're that. looking at data of Merrill Lynch clients. Yeah. That's not the YOLO crowd. That's right. Right? That's an old school investor. Yeah. Uh, probably not like on Reddit. So you're right. It's, it is two buckets. But in this case, they're looking at like the more mature investor and, and and those whole infrastructures. They're they're like down ten percent in the S and P five hundred. They're all hitting the horns. You know what I mean? They're like they're like this is the time to start layering into if you had cash on the sidelines because a lot of people and we know this very sensible investors when you see the S and P up twenty six percent on the year last year climbing a wall of worry and all that sort of stuff. People are like when do I get in? Well, if your broker calls you or your investment advisor from a reputable bank, you know, and they say, listen, we're down ten percent. You wanted me to tell you when to get in. Get in. Yeah. You said uh, last February was the top, the sentiment top, the top for, for most For investor stocks. enthusiasm. For, but no, you were right. None of the above. Did you guys not even listen to the- <laughs> That's not what you show? said? That's, no. What did you say? That, that was that was the best thing. That was the top of the stock market. The market of stocks peaked in February. That's what I just said. That is what- you were talking about enthusiasm. I said investor enthusiasm. No, but it, it has nothing to do with sentiment. Right. It has it, to do with praise. Honestly, it doesn't even matter. That was a segue. No, it was a JV, but, I wanted, <laughs> but it's just important because from a sentiment perspective, last summer, sentiment was a headwind, right? We had no bears. We had the most bulls that we had had in years Correct. since 2018. So sentiment was a headwind last summer. Today, between, and then when you were talking about buckets of retail, I, I think there's two buckets too. Yeah. I think you've got... Financial advisors auto and buy, you have auto buy. individual investors are retail investors to me. So we take the investor intelligence polls and the AAII. They're and bearish. We, and we combine them AII is to create an average. And the AII and the II, we have the fewest amount of bulls since 2016. Nobody's bullish. Yeah. So fewer bulls than during the pandemic when we were staring into the abyss and the most bears since the pandemic. So when you look at the market environment and it's like, okay, is sentiment a headwind or a tailwind? I now think tailwind. we are in an environment for Can a I potential ripple. Yeah. Can I ask you a question though? Yeah. You just had the worst start to a year in recorded history, I think. Like the worst January. For the US maybe. Okay, fine. That I mean, that's what we're talking about though. Sentiment is always going to be about US stocks. Retail doesn't know what the hell's going on. They don't know what's happening in other but markets. But isn't that even more bullish that sentiment is so bad? My point is, strength shouldn't, in stocks? shouldn't sentiment be bad for the typical U.S. investor Definitely. who is watching the worst start to especially, a year they've ever especially seen? Especially a lot of those people are stock pickers. The stock pickers are getting careened. Because they're in the growth. So yeah. sentiment yes. follows yeah. growth, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Right. Stock pickers are not buying home builders. They're literally buying like semiconductor stocks that are reporting great earnings and getting cut in half. It's all those IPO, R, yes. K-Web, all, all right. of those. My point is, when do you think the bottom, the top in venture capital uh, and startup uh, valuations, do you think it passed? Is it yet to come? Um, it has not come. Passed it's a while not ago. yet? No, and and I, I think it usually six to nine month lag from from the, the top so of the valuations. So that's where we are, though. Yeah, but think about it. So a lot of rounds, early rounds, were being priced off the fact that, look at Snowflake, it's trading at 50 times sales. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So and this is a massive market cap company that yeah. actually, you know, and then when, what I think really shifted is like when you started seeing a lot of these companies come public through SPAC or regular way IPO, it was a public down round in valuation. Yeah. So the lag there. Instantaneous. You know, so, 
so here's here's one thing, and I keep hearing this that SoftBank is going to have a real problem here because a lot of their public holdings, Baba in particular, has gone into the shitter here, and they are basically um, never marked down anything in the private markets. You know, they had that big one with um, WeWork. Uh, WeWork, obviously, um, from like forty billion to zero or whatever the hell it is. So that that could be a, a knock on effect or some sort of snowballing sort of thing once they finally have to do that, and maybe they've been selling the stuff that they can in public markets because that's what's liquid and they don't really want to mark down. Let, me, sh stuff. let me share this with you. This yeah. is from Think Plus Ventures. We believe the possibility of further decline in VC valuations is increasing as capital markets could see bigger drops, blah, 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 blah. We expect valuation to decline by at least 50% for new IPOs, getting closer to the historical norm of around seven times revenue versus 15 times in 2021. John, we have this chart. I mean- we never even came close to the dot com lunacy, yeah. but it's pretty. It's it's enough lunacy. VC was for so much cycle. smaller back then, right? That's and, true. And so I, I, you know, it, it wasn't global. Um, we believe the median valuation of early stage companies will not significantly change, but the average is likely to come down quite a bit as the appetite for forty to sixty million dollars seed valuation with only an MVP and a two person team will decline. We are even beginning to see pre seed companies at single digit valuations, something that only last year we thought we would never see again. Wait, pre seed, what does that even mean? Pre seed has no, there's no revenue there. No, no valuation. No, no, pre, like pre seed. Single round. digit valuations like $5 million. Uh, like, like yeah, instead yeah. of. Oh, I was thinking multiples, got it, got it. Yeah, instead of a company like just raising 20 out of the gates right. because one guy worked at Google, they're saying that's already over with. Very good. So, I mean, th this Tracy, idea is that, that. Is that our problem? I hope they go to zero. I mean, if I'm not in it, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this idea that the private market is in some way divorced from the public market, Howard Lindzen has always been right about this. Like, w there's a feedback loop between the two, and it's inescapable, and I don't care how cool the startups are now, or if they're crypto or fintech or whatever, this is always going to be about what you could sell this shit to, and then to not, the last buyer. And then buyer not to mention, Josh, when you investors in venture capital have liquid public investments, exactly. whether they went out and bought public investments That's in a right. lot of cases or their private investments went public, but like it's the same money, well, it's the same players. Now, now more than ever with all these crossover funds. Right. Now more than ever. Right, so if you just, if 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 you were part of the group that funded Snowflake pre-IPO, came public, you were very rich, you're still very rich now, but you're significantly less Actually, rich than you were a year ago. Your sentiment toward your next five investments might change, and there'll be some people that go the other way. And I saw this from yeah. in an article uh, in the information talking about a, a CEO, at one of these crossover funds goes, "You know what? I'm going to start buying public stocks because they're cheaper than the, right. than the private ones." Uh, right, that that was, too, right? Yeah, and not only that, Gavin on that uh, on invest like the best, he goes, "Welcome." He's like, "Welcome to all of you to the insanity in the public markets because they never they just for ten years have just seen valuations skipping up, skipping up. They think they're geniuses. They never have to mark anything. The time horizons." 10 10 years, welcome to the insanity right oh, now. Oh, they're building on IRR. It's, it's, the it's illiquid hilarious. stuff that gets marked once every 18 months, it's like practice for yeah. the public markets. Hey, listen, th without VC, we don't have a lot of these crazy innovations. So th we're not sitting here shitting on, on the practice of it. It's the valuations. And I say the same thing about public markets. You know, it's investors who lost their goddamn minds. It wasn't like the Wall Street machine or your broker or this or whatever. You wanted it. You know what I mean? And you went for it. And some asshole paid, you know, 50 times sales for Snowflake in November when the stock was trading at $400. And that no one forced him to do that. You know what I mean? You thought that was a good idea. The, By the, thing, way, not, right, not, the not, thing is that people think the investment bankers well, that could are bringing, have been a short getting squeezed and was then forced. Yeah. Pe people think like the bankers <laughs> bringing these public have some sort of responsibility to govern the valuation. They will sell whatever shit they think they can get you to buy at the highest price possible. They're not. They're not. Um, they're not here to like uh, keep people calm. They're they're here literally to bill on the biggest deal they can. I'm bring looking to at market. that. Could Theranos have in in, in, a, in an alternate universe? Could that have been a public company? Is yeah, it? it almost got. It almost could have squeaked through. Was Goldman talking to them? Of course. I told you all she had to do was pivot, and say this isn't working so well, but we're going to do this new thing. That would have given her three more years to f around. But not only are we not shitting on VCs, they subsidized all of these amazing companies for the last decade. Like all of these money losing companies that were amazing for consumers. It's been great for us. It's Uber been amazing. and the delivery DoorDash, services. It's been, it's been okay. they've, yeah. been, they've been they've been they've been a godsend. It's been How amazing. about right? And 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 I feel the same way about like uh all the content that's being created because of cheap money. We probably have like twice the amount of great TV shows than we otherwise would have. 
if it actually costs Hollywood Studios like 7% to to fund uh, programming. I watched uh, the Kanye doc. Holy moly. Unbelievable. That, was, that scene with Pharrell where he's like, yo, I love you. Yeah. That was so good. All right. I didn't, I didn't want to dwell on this uh, for a lot of the show, so we're just going to kind of um, uh, blaze by this. But corporate America pulling out of Russia, I don't think we've ever seen an economy this big literally commit suicide right before our eyes. This is the 11th biggest economy in the world. They they actually committed suicide this week. I just want to give you guys a couple of the highlights of what's going on. Uh, MSCI and FTSE Russell, which said another way, BlackRock and Vanguard, literally just made uh, anything in the Russian Federation ineligible for investor dollars. Um, Ford announced Tuesday suspending operations in uh, in uh, Russia. They had a big joint venture there, gone. General Motors halting all exports to Russia until further notice. Doesn't sell that many there, but so what? Volkswagen stopping production of vehicles in Russia. will suspend exports to Russia as well. Boeing suspends support for Russian airlines. Airbus, same thing. Apple, no more uh, iPhones being sold in Russia, and they're shutting down apps in the App Store. You literally can't use Apple Pay there. Uh, Meta. Blocking access to Russia Today and Sputnik and other Russian uh, media companies. Twitter, barely doing shit. <laughs> Reduce the visibility and amplification of Russian state media. Twitter sucks. Uh, Netflix, refusing to air Russian state TV channels. Spotify, tells Russia to go f*** itself. Roku, YouTube, Google. The list is literally endless. And it's more than symbolic. They're walking away from some actual money. All right, so it's a crazy precedent they're setting. Let's just say in a month from now, um, China invades Taiwan. What do we do there? Oh, they won't do anything. Of the okay, sort. so we're absolute hypocrites. We just had the Olympics in, uh, uh, you know, in China, and you know, there's there's supposed genocide, you know, with the Uyghurs and stuff like that. Nobody did anything. No one says anything. I mean, it's a weird precedent. We will be hypocrites, all of these U.S. multinationals, for the most I part. I fully about agree it. with you. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, but. Um, if they are forced, you know, because there could be a situation where U.S. consumers force the hand. We've seen this again and again and again, right, about like sort of geopolitical sort of things. I mean, um, you know, I, I just think the bigger issues with this is like we have a surging dollar right now because of all this stuff. I mean, like it's going to be really hard for multinationals. Surging dollar consider. relative to the euro. Yeah. Re relative to the euro. Not, but like think about if if, if a lot of others. U.S. corporations were hoping to get back. The U.S. came back online, I think, quicker than a lot of other economies. If they were hoping to kind of take advantage of the rest of the globe reflating, now all of a sudden you have all of these inflationary pressures. You have f***ed up supply chain. Sorry, Duncan. Um, you know, you have a surging dollar. And now you have the social pressure of, um, you know, not doing business. And, and, and just, so you know, I mean, MBS can go hack up, um, reporters, you know what I mean? In Turkey and nothing happens whatsoever. You know what I mean? Um, from our career. Well, in, in real life though, we are not doing, we, we are not, uh, as big of an economic force in the lives of the average Saudi as we are in the lives of people in China. China is like a super yeah. important We market. got this alert today at, from TD. Due to the liquidity issues stemming from restrictions placed on all Russian securities by TD Ameritrade's clearing agents, neither buy nor sell order on Russian securities are able to be accepted at this time. This is a rapidly evolving situation and we will continue to provide updates. Oh, that's a shame. Available. <laughs> Does anybody want to trade these securities? In, so in BP's Rosnet, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever they pronounce it, who's so somebody was saying this morning, the Russian oligarchs are going to make out like bandits because they're going to buy it for pennies on the dollar. Um, for, back from BP, buy with what money? Like literally, buy with what money? Uh, Disney suspending the release of theatrical releases in Russia. Uh, the entertainment giant had multiple films set for release in Russia. Marvel's Doctor Strange, Pixar's Lightyear. I don't know if Russians are really into our movies there or not. <laughs> But to your point, they ain't doing that with China. No. If not for Chinese audiences, they can't fund any of these movies. So I, th I think you're I think you're dead on. Uh, I wanted to get to this too. You guys know Rob uh, Koifman from Koifin. Yeah. So I hung up with Rob like uh, an hour ago. Rob uh, created Koifin, which is kind of like online charts, market data, a lot of – you use it a little bit for Hell certain yeah. things? Yeah. <laughs> Koifin, is, Koifin is, is a great product. Uh, Rob has 20 employees who are Ukrainians living in Ukraine. They're all in their 20s and 30s. They're kids. And they're programmers and developers. And they've, they're they not like outside contractors. They're literally his employees. 
they are trapped in the country. And some of them have managed to make it west where there aren't as, where there isn't as much bombing and whatever, but some of them stayed in the hardest hit cities because their parents are there mm -hmm. and they just won't leave them. And it's a sick fucking thing that's going on right now. And I know a lot of people are frustrated and they're like, how do I help? What do I do? I wanted to let you guys know, Rob said he's going to set up a thing where we can make donations that will go directly to his employees that are trapped in the country, maybe help them get food, maybe help them get supplies, maybe help them get the hell out of there. It's not set up yet. There's a regulatory thing where you can't do a um, GoFundMe yeah. and then send it overseas. So he's going to figure out a way that he can do it. Crypto? And Does I'll, it Bitcoin solve this? So yeah. our, our, our good friend, I mean, Patrick McCormick, and not boring, he did his whole Monday post on this. So go look at it. There's a link fest in there, and there's a ton of links that you can do. And I know Masterworks is obviously um, a sponsor, and a sponsor of ours and his. And we were all donating um, this week the Masterworks sponsorship um, to some of those. UNICEF was one of them. But he had a lot of direct things. And there was actually a crypto account that was open that was totally legit. There's some people, obviously, at A16Z verified it and everything like that. Um, so Packy's Not Boring Post was called Ukraine on Monday. Right, we'll Check we'll that link out. to that. Yeah. yeah, we'll link to that. And whenever uh, Rob figures out what he can do to get money to his people, but I just wanted to shout out Coifin. And he says the users of Coifin have already been just bombarding him. Like, what can we do? How, how can we help? So I thought that was pretty cool to see our community pull together like that. Uh, we're going to do a hard pivot and end on a, a lighter note. What's the best burger in New York? I wanted to hear both of your takes on this because I feel like it's going to be a little contentious. Didn't we run into each other there a few, like maybe a couple of years Where's ago? Where's there? Where? Where's well, there? First of all, tonight, aren't we doing the Compound and Friends? It's got like a risk reversal collab at Fort Charles Prime Rib. Yeah, I mean, is that, that burger. Dude, that's, is, the dude, that's the Ocheval burger. Yeah. It's the Ocheval Oche is one of my favorites. I mean, to see, I'm, I'm a technician. Have you not, been, have you not, have you not been to Fort Charles? No, I haven't no, been, dude. No, this is a virgin. Tonight, Do we start with burgers? History. Fort I Charles mean, Prime Rib is so oh, good. It's like a meat lover's oh, oh, batnik. So good. Uh, we're not We've been there. We're yeah. getting burgers? We're not getting everything. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. It's called the Nathan. Dan, the Dan's order is, is uh, we got it. Dude, I trust Dan Nathan. Yeah. Like, bro, right. this is delicious, All right. by the yeah. way. All right, so yeah, first things first, we're also going to be drinking this. This is Como's tequila. This is their rosé tequila. It's absolutely delicious. My friend, Joe Marchese, Human Ventures, he us. Co-founded this with Richard Betts. He's a former master psalm, and they created this. It's delicious. This they is have, so good. And Yeho, an extra in Yeho, in this Rosa, and Do we're going like to be this? drinking that tonight. It's it's, it's so delicious. Good. All right. So wait. So you got Ocheval? That's your that's your no. I it, well, I, I don't call it like, the Four Charles or I mean, the Four I, Charles I, I burger. I don't slum it over there. What's at Ocheval. Your, what, what's the best burger in New York City? You know, I just have had such good times. Like you know, late nights. So. Stop filibustering. Ooh, you know what? I was, I actually just, I'm, a, I'm an audible. I was going to go corner bistro. You and I ran into each yeah. other there. No, yeah, 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 yeah. no, that's not the best. It's good. No, it's good. you know what it is? I don't know it. It's the black label burger at Manetta Tavern. That's the best burger with, in the city. With the no? bone marrow. So you get a side of bone marrow and you spread the bone marrow that on, on the, the black the label? Okay, the black label is yeah. rich as f. Yeah. So, so I my get, buddy created that. Lee I Hansen the, created that. How burger. do you put bo wait, bone marrow on the bun? Have you, like been, spread have it? you been to Manetta? No, no Manetta, I have yes. been. Yeah. Okay, so you know how you can get the bone marrow? I don't love that burger, but Michael, that's no, no, no. Favorite. Put it you, like on the toast, the, to, like the to, Christinis, but instead of putting on the Christinis, you put it in the burger. When you go to Manetta, you got to get the black oh, wow. label and the Manetta burger and go have these. Because and the and they have label, a delicious French dip. Yes, they do. Lunch. The black label is too. too much. What's the difference own. between the Manetta burger and the, the black, black label? The black label is just like 18 more pounds of grease. Like it's just richer. It's more rich. One has caramelized onions yeah. on it and it's just a different, it's got short rib and stuff like yeah. that. So it's I, good. I go the other way with burgers. I'm a traditionalist. I don't want Oh, you like JG Melon? You like JG Melon? JG Melon's good. Well, we're going to basic. It is literally the simplest. There's basic, no yeah. bullshit. It's extremely basic. I actually think they serve it on a Wonder Bread roll. Yeah. It's old school. It's old, but that's So me. just, you know, tonight, Emily, Emily? Our, our, our mid course is going to be the burger, okay? <laughs> Duncan, and Duncan's going to have to leave the room. Duncan's literally vegan. <laughs> okay. Josh Duncan's going to have to leave the room. I, I was about to say, this is all plant based, right? right? <laughs> PJ Clark's is that's good. Is good. JG Mellon, especially the one the E70s, the original. Honestly, it's the most reliable. If you walk in there, Anytime during the day, during the night, it will be an identical cheeseburger. No frills. 
Like, there's nothing. Wait, what about the steak? What's, what steakhouse does the burger? Is that Bobby Vance? Bobby, I love the Bobby Vance. You've had Bobby Vance. Peter, 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 Bobby Vance yeah. is good. Peter Bob Luger's has the most yes. underrated burger Agreed. also. I agree with um, that, too. 100%. Yeah. And people don't go they're there. taking the steak that has already been aging yeah. for 28 days that they haven't sold, and they're grinding yeah. it. So hold on. Can we, tell, can we tell the folks, the listeners, this is the, this is the move. So <laughs> you're not going to go to Brooklyn and go to Peter Luger's and no. order a burger. You're going to get the porter right. house, right? Right, right? But Lunch? the burger's so good that what you should do is you get it as an appetizer and you cut it into fourths yes. and everybody yeah. share it on a move. piece of the Pro burger. That's, that's, the that's what we're doing. That's Better what we're move. doing tonight at Fort Charles. Better All right. Uh, everyone's probably heard enough <laughs> from us chazas at this point. You, you, you say that word, right? Chaza? Let me hear it. I, I, chaza. So I'm like uh, I, Scarface I, said I, that I, shit I, I'm Jewish now I know Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, Cuban I, in Miami I'm Is tribal. like 75% Jewish I'm, Jew, I'm, I'm a Jewban Like I went to Catholic school From 4 to 22 But I think I'm, I think I'm in we've, we, we, we welcome you With open, open arms Open arms